welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, it is your WWE Day 1 review and results. Now, I didn't do any predictions, setups, none of that stuff, man. I feel like it's been a while since I did some of that stuff. If you guys missed those types of videos, please let me know down in the comment section below. We've just been hit with a whole lot, man. It's been the end of the year with the, with the collection videos and the top 10s and the countdowns and a ton of product, man. Tons of new figures coming in, trying to get reviews up and things of that nature. So it's been a whole lot of hectic stuff. Christmas, I mean, it was a lot. So I do apologize for the lack of predictions and reviews and things of that nature. However, man, we are going to review this show. I watched it, I tuned in, and I sat down my uh, little butt on the couch and I watched this show, and I'm going to review and tell you guys about the, the show that took place. Now, if you guys don't know how these videos work, we're just going to run through the entire car, breaking down every single thing that happened at the show, letting you guys know my own personal thoughts and opinions on it, where we go from here, maybe some storyline ideas, all the different things, just uh, pretty much just rough shot the highlights of this and tell you my own p thoughts and personal opinions about what took place at this show. COVID-19 has gotten to Roman Reigns, so I pray for a speedy recovery for him. I pray that all is well with him. I'm sure that he is taking every single precaution. I'm sure he's getting the best possible treatment that is available to him, and I hope the absolute best for him. I know he'll bounce back better than ever. Because of said events, Brock Lesnar has been added to the Fatal 4-Way. So it's a Fatal 5-Way five five in the main event. It is no longer just a Fatal 4-Way for the WWE Championship. They have a Fatal 5-Way now for the Championship, so we get to see Brock Lesnar, Bobby Lashley get in the ring with some other talents that we love to see. It should be a magnificent matchup. I cannot wait for it. Let's find out how the hell it happened and break it down and cover WWE Day 1 and let you guys know exactly what took place at this show. Was it shitty? Was it good? Was it somewhere in between? Let's find out. So our first matchup on the kickoff show, guys, was going to be Sheamus and Rich Holland taking on Cesaro and Ricochet, and I caught the very end of this matchup. I tuned into the show around on like 6.50, maybe 6.50 55. It was right before the show was starting. So I just caught like the very end of this matchup where the bro kick was landed and Sheamus won the matchup for his team. Took out Cesaro and Ricochet. You know, not much to it. You know, I, I missed a lot of it so I really couldn't tell you. But I do know that Sheamus won the matchup. Probably shouldn't have even covered this but here it is anyway. Uh, Sheamus gets the victory. I didn't even know the storyline coming into this matchup for this for this match. So I, I hate to break it to you there Brad. But let's move on to the next one. And to start of our main show we had the Usos defending their smack down tag championships against the New Day, Xavier Woods, and Kofi Kingston. This matchup was fantastic. They went almost 20 minutes and they tore it up, man. This was I, I'd say the best match of the year so far at, at this point, right? I mean, it's it's day one of 2022 and holy crap, these guys burnt the damn house down. This was a classic New Day Uso matchup that went the next level. I think it was excellent. While this matchup didn't have the best build, it still had an excellent matchup and you, what did you expect, right? I mean, you have two of the best teams in the world still going at it. Just a classic. Just a freaking classic and a long history of classics that these teams have had. This is just another example in that long timeline of these, these teams going to battle. So, man, I, I really had no issues with this matchup. It was great. Very interesting, though. The Usos win with a 3D. If you guys missed this matchup, you definitely gotta go check it out. I'm very interested to see what the Dudley boys have to say about this, but they won the match with a 3D, which was kind of cool, and it was it was a very good match, man. Just very, very classic breakup of the pin fault. It was just a great match. If you guys missed it, you gotta go watch it. It is uh, just a bona fide banger, and you have to go check it out. But the Usos retain their titles like I say they should have. Now, next up, guys, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, because it was a waste of freaking time, but Drew McIntyre defeated Madcap Moss, Jesus Christ, and Happy Corbin at ringside. Just abysmal, man. Like, why? Like, I get the point of the gimmick. It's supposed to be dumb, and it's supposed to be just cringy and over the top, and like, what is this garbage? Get it off the TV. But why even book it like that. You know, why even have a character like that? God in heaven. It didn't make it satisfying for him to get beat up. It was just like, why am I watching this on my TV? Drew McIntyre needs to be doing something more important. Good lord, this was just pathetic, man. I didn't like this whatsoever. It almost went 10 minutes. It was just under 10 minutes, and it was just a waste of time. Just an absolute waste of time. Drew McIntyre should have absolutely squashed this fool, kicked Corbin's ass, and then got out of there. But shortly after this, backstage, they jump Drew McIntyre and then they put his neck in a chair and then they slam some scaffolding on it. So I guess they're trying to write Drew McIntyre off until the Rumble and maybe he'll come out late in the Rumble is what I'm guessing. I don't know if the, I don't know if he's going to miss the Rumble. I don't know, but I'm guessing he'll come in late at the Rumble. I bet he takes a break until the Rumble. He'll come in late, have a good showing, and we'll see where it goes. But Drew McIntyre defeats Trash Moss and Trash Corbin. God dang. 
Hey guys, this is editing Trey right now, and I just wanted to know what the hell was this noise right here? <laughs> trash moss and trash. <laughs> what the hell's going on? It's like an alien was trying to escape my body. I don't know what the hell was going on. Continue on with the video. I just had to get that out of the way. <laughs> Next up, guys, was the rated RKO Bros. I don't know where the hell that came from. RK. <laughs> RK Bro, probably one of my favorite tag teams of all of wrestling right now, taking on the Street Profits, who I also love, but this was uh, not nearly as long as the other tag match. It was about 11 minutes or so, and Rated, I don't, why do I keep saying Rated? I keep having Edge on my mind because he's also on the show. RK Bro defeats the Street Profits. They had Migos coming out. It was freaking Randy Orton dapping up Migos, and then Migos chilling at ringside with RK Bro. It was freaking sick. They do a really cool, like, assisted RKO to win the matchup. It was a fun match. Not the most just insane matchup ever, but it was a fun little tag team match. I always feel like RK Bro has the shortest tag matches when I know they could put on a classic if they really wanted to. You have some epic talent, man. Just I wish their matchups were a little bit longer, but this had a sick finish. I enjoyed it. It was what it was, but you know, we're we're still building to our inevitable RK Bro breakup where we get our WrestleMania match between Matt Riddle and Randy Orton. That's what I'm signing up for, and I'm here for it, man. I'm I'm excited to get this. But rated God in heaven, RK Bro defeats the street profits. Next up, guys, we have the Miz taking on Edge in a very, very good match. Holy hell, this one went 20 minutes long. This was a great clinic, man. I mean, these guys were back and forth, back and forth. Great story being told. Just two guys who have been around for a long time putting in work in the middle of a ring, man. It was a really classic one. Great story, like I said. You know, Edge trying to lock in the crossface over and over and over again. You had Maurice on the outside with the shenanigans. It was just a great moment. I'd say if you don't want to watch the tag team match, you want to see a singles matchup, this will be the matchup to watch. And if you guys, you know, if you want to run down the best matchups, this is one that you definitely need to watch. I thought it was very well crafted. I thought everything they did throughout the matchup was very fun. I thought that Edge looked sick in his black gear. Miz had on like a black, purple, and orange kind of Phoenix Suns looking gear or something like that. I'm sure we'll get it in figure form someday. But it was a fun little match. Speaking of elites, the Usos, man, the Usos, their gear on this show with the like partly red hair. I think it was Jimmy that had like partly red hair dye and then they had their bloodline shirts in red then they had black joggers with bloodline and red written on them then they had the red sneakers i know we've had red uso elites but those would be sick as hell because you could like customize them and make them all black so that would be really sick but uh i hope we get those in figure form please god but this matchup was fun edge ends up defeating the miz after uh beth phoenix comes out and runs off maurice and then distracts the miz because he's like oh shiz you want to come out here and talk to me what the hell are you gonna do and then edge spears one two three but it was a great story very dramatic throughout it, it reminded me a lot of Ziggler versus Miz not as good as that from No Mercy 2016 but it was very similar to that in the near falls and all the good stuff but it wasn't on that level quite yet but it was still on its way to being so it was a good match next up guys we have Becky Lynch taking on Liv Morgan a match that everybody wanted Liv Morgan to win I know they did everybody and their mom wanted Liv Morgan to win but it was not going to happen today Brad it did not take place it was a very fun matchup again though some good back and forth I thought that the passion was there for both women. Liv was going off. She was doing her absolute damnedest. She was working the arm of Becky. It looked like she had a shot, man. She, it looked like she had a shot. I thought she was going to get her at one moment in the match or a couple times in the match. I legitimately thought it was over, but it was not meant to be. Becky Lynch ends up defeating Liv Morgan in what was so close, man. It was so close, but at the end of the day, she could not get the job done, and I kind of like that. I wish it was kind of by cheating means, you know, putting, off, putting it off for another day because I'd really like to see Liv Morgan get that crowning moment you know but uh, it just wasn't quite ready for it and it was a good match she did very well in the matchup but it wasn't quite there like I said Becky Lynch wins I'm okay with that for now but I really would like to see Liv Morgan get that crowning moment soon but she is very young Becky Lynch is, is still on top of her game right now so I can see that working out and hopefully that will work out in Liv Morgan's favor and for the main event ladies and gentlemen we had the fatal five way now again it was Roman versus Brock for the Universal Championship Roman Reigns got diagnosed with COVID, praying for a speedy recovery for Roman Reigns, but he was not here tonight, so they had to change the main event of this show. It's supposed to be a fatal four-way between Big E, Seth, Bobby, and Kevin with no Brock Lesnar. Roman Reigns is out, so they were like, hell, let's plug Brock into this matchup, and what a matchup it was. This is my favorite matchup on the card. This is my favorite matchup so far this year, early on into 2022. Holy shish, man. This this was exactly what you want out of multi-man matches. I never understand why people don't like multi-man matches like it devalues the champ 
championship. It's this, it's that. To me, it creates a very fun match. It's always energetic, and you can have bodies flying everywhere, man. Like, you don't have to have the slow burn. You can have the car crash scenario where it's like you just can't look away because it's like bam, 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 bam. So I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, just multiple F5s, multiple suplexes, spears, spears through the barricade. We got to see Bobby and Brock square off. We got to see Big E and Brock square off. We got to see Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens team up in this thing with some cool counter moves. It was a fun-ass ride, and I did not see this coming. I did not see Brock Lesnar doing it, but he did it. He dethroned Big E with an F5 just like he did his man Kofi Kingston, and Brock Lesnar F5s Big E and becomes WWE Champion. I don't know how many WWE title reigns that is now, but I don't know where we go from here, but it looks like, are we on like a crash course for like Roman versus Brock for unification of the titles and ending the brand split? Is that where we're going? It looks like that's where we may be going, and I get, you know, they can, they continue to cut talent. I don't know, man. I'm just saying it may be in the cards. We may be headed towards a Roman versus Brock title for title match. I don't know, but the, the most important thing is getting Roman he healthy. I think he'll kick COVID in the face, and he'll come back, and uh, he'll continue to dominate like he's been doing, but man, what a damn show. What a damn, what a damn match, you know? It wasn't the most exciting show. I mean, you had a few matches here and there, but I guess when you go in with not much expectation, you come out a lot better than if you win went in with a lot of expectations in mind. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the main event a whole lot. You know, say what you will about Brock Lesnar winning the championship. It was shocking for sure. And I hate to see Big E get cut short like that. But at the end of the day, I didn't see him walking out with the championship. So it didn't really shock me. He lost the championship. I guess I'm just shocked by who who won it, I guess, because I didn't expect that at all. You know, Roman, Roman and Brock were supposed to do war. And then, you know, out of nowhere, bam, Brock Lesnar wins the other championship. So I was expecting KO, Bobby, or set to win. I literally thought each of them had a case, but bam, Brock Lesnar's your champion. I don't know what the hell to think, man. It blew my mind, but I was very excited for it, so I guess that counts for something. I don't know, man. What the hell's going on? I'm getting the hell out of here. I gotta go to Schlipp. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy the day one review. I thought overall it was an okay show. Not a bad show. Not a... Definitely not a terrible show. I enjoyed moments of it. I thought it was pretty solid, so and yeah, good. start off the year right. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I'll see you guys in the next video let me know what you guys thought and check out my top 10 wwe elites of the year video thank you very much don't cross the line like i guess covid when it freaking attached itself to roman reigns you cross the line